11. If you want to turn in your Bibles. So walking through the minor prophets chronologically as they were given. And Daniel brought us up to the captivity itself. The minor prophets are often referred to as pre-exilic or post-exilic. Exilic meaning exile. Um, But Daniel is really bridging the exile, isn't it? Because the exile happened during the book and now it's about to end during the book. So next, next we'll do the book of Obadiah, which is just one chapter. Then Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and that will be the end of the Minor Prophets. Daniel itself, um, in chapter 2, he, remember he was given the interpretation of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, which uh, summarized for mankind the four major world powers that would follow all the way up to the Antichrist. Then in chapter uh, 5, about 65 years later, uh, he was given a prophecy of the fall of Babylon through the writing of the wall. Remember when Belshazzar had his drunken party? And then in chapter 7 and 8, he was given more information about those four kingdoms, again, leading up to the Antichrist. Uh, Chapter 9, which we looked at a couple weeks ago, He was given the 70 weeks of God's program for Israel. And we understood how the 70th week is yet to come after the church age. And then in chapter 10, we were given that glimpse of the spirit world. We don't get many glimpses of that in the scripture, but given that small glimpse uh, where this angel came and said he had tried to get to Daniel in response to his prayers, but it took him three weeks of fighting uh, with the prince of Persia. And then Michael helped him and he was able to come and uh, be a blessing to Daniel. So here in chapter 11, uh, verses 1 to 35, which we won't look at because they're pretty much a repeat of the world history from uh, the time of the first arrival up through the kings of Persia, then the Egyptians and the Syrians division, then the Greek empire's division. Um, But... If you study it through, you'll find that it was so accurate that um, many tried to argue that the book of Daniel was written a lot later because how, how could a book predict the world powers so perfectly like we've seen? Well, because God wrote it. <laughs> Time means nothing to God. And if anything, it was just more proof of the, of the fact that the Bible is supernatural. But we will start in verse 36... Uh, where, again, we learn more about the reign and the fall of the final king, the final uh, man, world king, if you will, and that is the Antichrist. So notice down in verse 36, where we'll begin tonight in Daniel 11, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strong holds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at that time, at the end, shall the king of the south push at him, And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen, with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land. And many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stress forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over the precious things of Egypt. 
and of the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to, take, to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. I like that ending. He shall come to his end. And that is our title tonight. Let's pray. Lord, I pray now we learn from your word. And Lord, it would motivate us to warn others of what's coming, that they might escape this reign of the Antichrist. And uh, Lord, escape the consequences of their sin as well. So we pray you'll guide us in your truth tonight and teach us from your precious word. We give you this service in Jesus' name. Amen. So notice it says in verse 36, it's a king. But this is not the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is an anti-Jesus Christ, the Antichrist. And he's going to do according to his will. He's going to do what he wants to do, as we know, for this seven-year period, this 70th week of Daniel, 70 weeks. And he will magnify himself, as we see here, above every god. He is going to essentially appear to the world as God. And the world is going to worship Him as God. He will be the final king before the king of kings. And He will speak against God and He will magnify Himself above all gods. If you go to chapter 7 where we looked before, verse 25, we see here that um, He will lift Himself up. Notice Daniel seven twenty-five. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and the dividing of time. So again, he will speak great words against Almighty God and claim to be Almighty God. So we can look at Revelation 13 and get another glimpse of this self-magnification of the Antichrist. Revelation 13 introduces the mark of the beast. It introduces the number of the beast, which is why it's been over the centuries a superstitious number. But we as Christians are not superstitious. Amen. That is all a bunch of rubbish. We believe in the sovereignty of God. Notice Revelation 13, 5, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So again, we see that this king, this final king, will be a king that will magnify himself above all other kings and speak things against the God of heaven and claim to be God himself. We saw there in verse 37 of our passage, he will magnify himself. If you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we'll see this while you're in the New Testament. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where sure enough, the Bible warns us that if we find ourselves in the tribulation period, and hopefully you're born again and won't, won't have to be concerned about that, but if it turns out you weren't born again and you find yourself in the tribulation period... Uh, you'll know it because God lays it out in detail. But notice uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, in verse 4, the Bible says, "...who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that has worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." Now, if you're allowed to write in your Bible, that's a, those are some important phrases. Of God, as God, and is God. Very important phrases. Because this is, this is what the devil's been after, and for this short time he will appear as God, sitting in the temple of God, that's in Jerusalem, showing himself that he is God. Not a false God, he is going to claim to be the God of heaven. 
Now, this is what he's wanted. If you go to Isaiah 14, we'll see that this is what the devil has wanted from the time of his fall until now. He's currently the God of this world, but during the tribulation period, he will put himself as the God of heaven, the God of the universe. Notice Isaiah 14, verse 13, it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, this is talking about the devil, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. This is the devil speaking at his fall. And this is what he's wanted. He's wanted to be worshipped as God. We saw in verse 38 of our passage, it says, He will honor the God of forces. The Antichrist will be honoring, he'll be claiming to be the God of gods, but he'll be honoring the little God, the God of this world the God of forces. And we'll see that if you go to Revelation again, chapter 12 this time, this is what the Antichrist will be doing, claiming to be God while all the time honoring the God of this world and being controlled by and empowered by the God of this world, the devil. Uh, notice chapter 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Notice, deception's always been his end game. While we're in Revelation, we'll go to chapter 13 again, verse 2. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his authority. Well, now we've been told who the dragon is. It's Satan himself. So it's the dragon that gives the beast his what? Power, seat, and authority. He gets it all from the devil, the beast. And then while you're in 13, look down in verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 14. It says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the womb by a sword and did live. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Does the devil have power to work miracles? Absolutely. And he will especially do it during the tribulation period. And so he will even make an image to the beast and give that image the, what will look like life, if you will, and the world will be in awe at this miracle. And they will worship the image of the beast. And if they refuse to worship the image of the beast, does this sound familiar? Daniel, three Hebrew children. If they refuse to worship the image of the beast, they will be killed. So you can be killed for not taking the mark, and you can be killed for not worshiping the image of the beast. A lot of people are going to be killed. But better to be killed and go to heaven than to take the mark and go to hell. Amen? Um, so that, that is who Daniel is describing for us here at the end of uh, Daniel chapter 11. And if you look down at verse 39 of our passage, Daniel 11, it says, Thus shall he do... In the most strongholds with a strange God, who we just read about. Verse 40, at the time of the end. So as the tribulation period comes to an end, uh, things will heat up. Halfway through, he turns his back on the Jews and things get messy. Um, and then he gets, he gets attacked, but he, he, he's not overthrown. And it says, verse 45, and he shall plant the tabernacles of His palace between the sea and the glorious holy mountain. That word holy mountain is always referred firstly, obviously, to God's throne, but secondly, it refers to the seat of God's earthly power during God's kingdom, which is Jerusalem. How do we know this? Because Daniel chapter 9 tells us, verse 16... 
Turn there. It says, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain. So now we know, on an earthly sense, the holy mountain is the city that's currently not owned by the Jews. How interesting is that? But that will change. And then my favorite part of the whole passage, Daniel 11.45, yet he shall come to his end. Amen. The devil loses. Good news. So let's see that. Daniel chapter 2, verse 35. Daniel chapter 2, verse 35, and we'll see the devil, the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet come to an end. Daniel chapter 2, verse 35, then, sorry, wrong chapter, Daniel 2, 35, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. If you don't know who that stone is, that's Jesus. Coming and destroying the Antichrist's kingdom, setting up His kingdom, which, as it says, will fill the whole earth. Praise the Lord. That's the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2, quickly. And again, we get to see Him come to His end. I'm so thankful God gave us the end of the story in, this, in His book. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of His mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming, even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So we know who this is. It's the Antichrist. It's the beast, power, signs, lying wonders. But as we see in verse 8, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who will destroy His kingdom and end His reign. And then uh, Revelation 17, we're almost done. He shall come to His end. Next week when we look at Daniel 12, beautiful chapter, but not about the Antichrist. It's about God's children. Uh, Revelation 17, verse 14, it says, These shall make war with the Lamb. Now, that's a dumb move. You don't fight Jesus, amen? And the Lamb shall overcome them. Why? For He, the Lamb, is Lord of lords and King of kings. Well, that one verse clearly teaches the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb is King of kings and Lord of lords. And this Lamb will overcome those who make war. This is at the end of the tribulation period. And the devil loses. Go to chapter 19, verse 19. What happens to the devil? This is after Jesus returns to the earth here in chapter 19, verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The devil loses. Praise God. The devil is cast into the lake of fire. Not destroyed yet. He just is on hold for a thousand years while we enjoy the kingdom. And then he's let out for just, just long enough to have one last push. And then he's destroyed or his kingdom is destroyed forever. But he shall come to his end. Never forget that. We look around and what do we see? We see a messed up world, don't we? We see the God of this world just taking more and more control of the world itself, more people uh, following the devil's ways. But God said it would happen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.13, it says that 
deceivers and those that be deceived shall wax worse and worse. Evil men and seducers, worse and worse. Well, we see it. We see it on a spiritual level. We see it on a political level. We see it. The devil is definitely the god of this world, and he's starting to flex his muscles, isn't he? But we shouldn't get despondent about that. It just means Jesus is coming soon. We should be excited about it because it means once Jesus does come, seven years later, he loses. And we get to come back and see all of that happen. Because in chapter 19, in the early part of the chapter, we see us coming back with Christ on white horses. We get to watch him destroy the devil's kingdom and set up his own, with, in which we will rule and reign with Christ. So this is kind of Daniel's final statement about the Antichrist. And then chapter 12, it says about God's people, he shall come to his end, the devil loses. And Jesus, as always, wins. Aren't you glad you're on his side? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for again reminding us that with Jesus, we 